good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good twilight, dusk, dawn, good whatever. Today is Thursday, or Friday, or Monday, or whatever day you're watching it. I am recording this on a Thursday, March 16th. Tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day, but I will not get to be able to do a review tomorrow. So I am doing a review tonight, or this afternoon, the 16th of March. I know I keep saying I have this Pinot Grigio that I'm going to review for you all. <clears throat> Excuse me. I do. I have a lot of it. I have a few bottles. So don't worry. I will do that. But I already have this wine open today because we are cooking it in a stew. It is Lan. L-A-N. Art Lan. L-A-N. It's uh, from the Rioja region of Spain. It is a Crianza 2012. Made from a Tempranillo grape. Here's what it looks like. Now be careful. Make sure you look for the red label. There are three. I don't know offhand what the other colors are, but I can tell you what the other two are labeled. This is the Lan Crianza. Which is a wine that is aged for at least two years. And at least one of those is aged in oak. There is the Rioja Reserva. Which is a wine that is aged for three years. Of which at least one is aged in oak. Now notice the difference. The Crianza is aged two years at least one in oak. The Reserva is aged three years, one of which is um, aged in oak, at least one. And then there is the Gran Reserva, which is has been aged two years in oak and three years in the bottle. So the only difference is <clears throat> the aging. They're all pretty much the same grape. Crianza is the cheapest. Um, this one that I just showed you, um, I don't know, maybe $15, uh, maybe 12 on sale. The others can, uh, the Reserva can be 15 and 20 and Grand Reserva can be like 20 plus. Um, this one I showed you is 13.5% alcohol. Some of the other ones may be higher. Uh, it depends on the aging process. But really that's the only difference is the aging. Uh, the Crianza, the one I'm having, is aged the least in two years. One of, its, one of which is oak. And then as I just said from the others. Um, this one that I am drinking is Tempranillo. Tempranillo grape sourced from selected vineyards in Rioja Alta and Rioja Alvesa. This wine was aged for 12 months, so there we go, a year, in mixed barrels. At Bodega Salon, we are pioneers in the research and use of mixed barrels, a combination of American oak, um, American oak staves, which bring elegant notes of vanilla and French oak heads which result in spicy aromas. Intense flavors of ripe red fruit. Elegant and long lasting in the mouth. Very first uh, very first sal first setal um, with tapas, cold starters and pastas and barbecue. Drink at eighteen degrees Celsius, sixty four degrees Fahrenheit. Imported by Monsuer Touton Selection. It's a red wine. Obviously, it's a product of Spain. Wow. That's a lot of information. And I know a couple things I may have mispronounced. <clears throat> I'm trying. I'm learning. But, you know, Spain, Italian, French. S some can be so difficult. 
uh, especially if you don't know the language. I'm really trying my best to learn the pronunciation. I'm trying the best that I can. Let's look at the glass. The wine in the glass. Come on, people. You know what I'm talking about. It's not totally dark, but it's not totally light. I would say this definitely has a real good ruby core almost all around. So, I mean, this is what your typical red wine is like. Uh, not really purple, maybe a little bit, but not really dark, not really black. Um, so, it definitely is a your, what you would... Uh, Think of your medium red wine. Uh, there's a middle there. You can see through it, but it's not totally light like a Pinot Noir, but it's not totally black or dark like some Zins or some Cabs or even sometimes uh, Malbecs can get to be really dark. Um, Whoa, wow, okay, definitely, definitely an oak bomb, definitely getting that vanilla they were talking about. That's the, really the first thing that stands out on that first sniff. Vanilla. Definitely a spice, you definitely get a little bit of, um, a little bit of spice kick on there as well. Letting all the fruits come together. I don't really think it mentioned anything about... Okay, it said ripe red fruit, so... I would say cherry is a big thing on this. Raspberry. Cherry and raspberry, definitely big on this. So yeah, vanilla, spice, raspberry, cherry. Those are the big ones really I'm getting right now. Maybe just a slight bit of earth in there. Not a whole lot, but maybe just a tad. All right, let's see what it's doing. Wow, very smooth. You definitely get that vanilla. <clears throat> Excuse me. You definitely get that vanilla that's on there. Little bit of spice. It is not harshly spicy by any means. Um, but it is a good spice on there. A little, a little good kick. Not a big, huge grip. Um, that you might expect from some really spicy zins. So no grip, really no jam in there. Just an overall nice, smooth, fruit, definitely fruity wine in there. I am getting that cherry. Um, kind of like a really rich raspberry. Um, somewhat tart, maybe even. Nothing too tart, but a little bit of tartness in there. Maybe just very small hints of strawberry. So definitely good red fruit along with that vanilla and that spice. Um, it's different. It's definitely different 
from some other wines I've had from the Rio Ha region. But did that, and this is, um, I mean, but this is really light. That this is, uh, I would say, anyone starting off drinking wine could go right into this. It's not harsh by any means. It's very simple, very easy to drink. And it's good. It's, I mean, it's still lingering in the mouth. Those fruitness, even um, even a little bit of spice, and from that, it's all really still lingering there in the mouth. Because there is that spiciness, which is actually now really starting to pick up. Um, um, since I just mentioned it, it's kind of really picking up towards the end. Um, really starting to give you a little bit of fire not terrible though not anything i don't think anyone can handle definitely what they said you know pair this with barbecue pair this with pasta pair this uh it i'm having a stew tonight so i would say um definitely uh, a stew would be probably pretty good with this as well don't have this with light sort of food don't have this with fish don't have this with uh, chicken, unless if um, you plan on having a chicken be sort of spiced up. So be careful with what you might want to pair this with. Overall, because I do base it off of it being a 2012, based off of uh, the aromas are definitely there. The flavors are definitely there. And because it's long lasting, I would say it's a hard one because I, I do drink Spanish wine. I haven't reviewed one in a while. I would say because there is a little bit of tartness on here. There is a, it is a little bit of tart. Now, I don't know whether that's because I've had it open since this morning because we're cooking with it, because of the age. My guess would be this is a wine you probably want to drink almost as soon as you open it. I think it's at the point now where it's good enough to maybe let it um, stay open for an hour. But it's definitely a wine that I think is good to drink now. So, I'm going to give this, I don't want to necessarily give this such a low rating, because it is a good wine. Um, and by such a low rating, I would say three and a half. I don't think it's a perfect wine by any means. Maybe if um, there's an older one, you can, a newer one you can find, like 13 or 14, I would say go for that. I'm going to give this a simple four. Simple four, it's really good, it's really great. I don't want to say that tartness is necessarily from it being opened. It's only been open for a few hours, so I can't see how a few hours would make it taste so tart now. It's probably just naturally tart, in which case that does kind of... I like, I'm not a big fan of really tart wines. Once you get past the tartness, though, it is very, very good. Um... So actually, you know what? Scratch that for. This is going to get a four and a half. Um, you just really got to get past that tartness. Um, and it's really just... Mm, I'm sorry. Scratch that four and a half. Um, I'm going to stick with my four. Every sip does have a little bit of tartness in it. Um, so... Once you can get past that, though, it really brings everything together. I know I'm kind of a little bipolar on this wine, but, you know, I'm just kind of really trying to figure out everything that comes together. I'm, I'm just going to stick with my four. Um, every sip does, as I said, give you that little bit of tartness, but it does really blend together smoothly. But you just kind of have to get past every initial sip, which... I'm not a big fan of. I like it just be one, not oh I gotta deal with this every sip. But 
I still overall like it in the end. I think you all will too. Four to five. Lon from the Rioja region. Crianza 2012. Remember what I said about what Crianza means. And until next time, everyone, cheers.